response to growing demand for SUVs and crossovers in the US, Honda has finally resurrected the Passport name and developed this mid-sized crossover that thoughts directly between the larger pilot and smaller CRV. Today let's put the all new 2019 Passport through its paces and see if it's worth your money. Before we get started, I'd like to give a huge shout out to Honda of Pasadena for hooking us up with this brand new Passport 2 review for the day. They are an excellent dealership and if you're in the LA or Pasadena area and looking for a new Honda, definitely go check them out. I'll leave a link to their information in the description down below. The Honda Passport starts at $31,990 base for the Sport trim. That is actually $540 more than the starting price of the Pilot which has an extra row of seating. But we have the fully loaded Elite trim which throws in everything Honda has to offer like navigation, perforated leather seats, parking sensors, these 20 inch alloy wheels that are black, you name it. We'll talk more about the features later but all in we're at $45,000 delivered. Let's talk about the Passport's exterior styling and features. From the exterior the Passport looks very similar to the Pilot. The headlights are nearly identical and the taillights look the same from the side profile but they lack those tails that jet out into the trunk like the Pilot has. Despite these similarities the Passport has a few styling cues that make it look a little sleeker and more rugged than the Pilot, like the blacked out grille with sort of a chainmail type pattern, black 20 inch alloy wheels, blacked out mirrors, and dual exhaust tips. All in all, while the Passport won't turn any heads, it's definitely handsome for what it is. For those of you who are fans of the great outdoors, these roof racks come standard on all Passport Touring and Elite models. Now let's hop on inside and check out what the Passport's interior has to offer. The interior of the Passport Elite has everything you would expect from a $45,000 car. Heated and ventilated perforated leather seats, a mostly digital digital instrument panel with an excellent resolution, a greatly improved 8 inch infotainment display with navigation that supports both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and even a wireless phone charger which is a nice touch. Like in most higher trim Hondas, the gear selector is no longer a traditional lever. It's made up of a series of buttons that takes a bit of getting used to. Overall, this is a great place to spend time on your daily commute and anywhere else life takes you. For the driver's seat, Honda includes a 10 way power seat adjustment that basically allows you to adjust the seat 10 ways. It's pretty self explanatory. But but for the passenger seat, they only include a four-way power adjustment feature. For a $45, nearly $46,000 car with markup, this is not acceptable at all. Although the Passport is six inches shorter than the Pilot, which is quite a large number in the car world, creature comforts are absolutely amazing back here. As you can see, legroom is great. I have no problem sitting back here. This is great on long road trips. Uh, I will not get cramped at all. As you can see right here, we have a rear seat climate control system. We have a rear power outlet, two USB ports, and because this is a higher trim pilot, we have a nice window shade right here to block out the sun on those sunny days. With the rear seats folded up, the Honda Passport boasts roughly 41 cubic feet of storage. Fold them down and that number increases to roughly 78 cubic feet of storage. That is pretty good considering the Honda Pilot, which is six inches longer, like I said before, has a cubic feet storage of 83.9. Like many of its other crossovers, Honda equipped the Passport with the hands-free tailgate feature where you can kick your foot underneath the rear bumper and open the tailgate by itself. Unfortunately, I found this feature pretty hard to use, as I shall now demonstrate. You know what? I'm just going to use this. This is much, much quicker. So under the hood of the 2019 Honda Passport, we have basically the exact same motor producing the exact same figures as the Honda Pilot. 280 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque from a naturally aspirated 3.5 liter V6, Honda's bread and butter engine. This is mated to a nine-speed automatic transmission and drives the front wheel's base, but all-wheel drive is an option. With the Elite trim, all-wheel drive is standard. This is good for up to 5,000 pounds of towing capacity. Now let's take the Passport out on the road and see how it drives. So driving the 2019 Honda Passport, the first thing that comes to mind is predictable. Now if you guys have seen my 2018 Honda Pilot review, I'll link that somewhere up here and in the description down below. Or if you guys have driven a 2016 and up Honda Pilot, you really won't notice much of a difference between that and the 2019 Passport. I will say that this car picks up a little bit faster than the 2018 Honda Pilot and I assume also the 2019 Honda Pilot because those are basically the same car too. Um, other than that, uh, 
the suspension basically rides the same. It's nice and smooth, soaks the bumps like a cloud. It's very quiet. Uh, it's just a really nice commuter car. One feature I really didn't like about the 2019 Honda Passport was the automatic start-stop feature. When you come to a complete stop, the, you can really tell that the engine is shutting off and the power steering turns off. You don't even have access to the power steering, so if you need to make a quick maneuver, tough luck. You have to wait for the engine to fire back on. When the engine does fire back on, it shakes the whole car, makes a noise. It really is not a pleasant experience. Um, a lot of other manufacturers do a great job implementing this feature, but Honda, unfortunately, uh, did not impress me with their execution of it. Luckily, Honda does give you the option to turn this feature off, which is what I did because it makes the driving experience much more pleasant. So the Honda Passport has paddle shifters to shift its 9-speed automatic transmission. I am on an on-ramp where you have to accelerate to freeway speeds almost instantly, so we're going to test out how quick they shift. Actually, not bad. I've driven sports cars with slower paddles than this vehicle, so props to you Honda. It's definitely not a quick car, but uh, it provides a little bit more of an engaging experience. The 2019 Honda Passport is sporting the updated Honda steering wheels which are much more ergonomically friendly and easier to use than the previous pre-facelift steering wheels. It really makes a huge difference. All Passports come standard with Honda Sensing which is Honda's excellent suite of safety features and driver assistance tech including adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist and automatic braking. Uh, Honda used to charge a premium for this, uh, used to roll it into a package you had to pay extra for but it's great now that they have it standard in most of their vehicles. Honda has also replaced its lane watch camera with traditional blind spot monitoring lights that light up when someone gets caught in your blind spot. I think this is a really great replacement for lane watch because I think lane watch was a gimmick. As cool as it was to have a camera on your right side mirror, uh, it really didn't do much in the sense of helping you prevent accidents because the resolution wasn't that great and uh, it just took less time to just look over your shoulder like that. I really like the large configurable display in the middle of the gauge cluster. It's definitely an upgrade over the traditional analog gauge cluster with the tiny display in previous generation Hondas. Uh, it provides useful information and just looks a lot better. Honda has also greatly improved the rear view camera over the previous generation Hondas. The resolution is a lot better and you can just see a lot more out the back of your car. I'm a huge fan of Honda's all-wheel drive system and even though I live in Southern California where we get no snow and rarely any inclement weather, I still recommend it to anyone looking to buy a new Honda. This is because these large SUVs tend to get a little wafty and wobbly, especially on twisty or tight roads. The all-wheel drive system just helps it stay stable, helps the driver feel safer and more comfortable driving the car, and just enhances the driving experience overall. It's not that much more expensive, so even if you don't live in an area with inclement weather or snow, I definitely would recommend getting the all-wheel drive system if you're in the market for a new Honda. There are also different modes that you can change it based on the terrain you're in. So what's the verdict on the all-new 2019 Honda Passport? Well, I think I think it's an excellent vehicle combining a great driving experience, attractive styling, and an excellent set of safety features all into one cohesive package. However, there is one caveat, and that is this is basically a pilot with the back cut off. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's some revolutionary new vehicle. No, it's a smaller version of the pilot. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing if you want a Honda pilot but don't need that extra third row. Well, this is a great option for you, but it's not that much different. Well, that's going to do it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. In fact, it informative. If you did, please be sure to smash that subscribe button and follow us on Instagram at CarVisionLA for news updates, exclusive content, and giveaway notifications. Once again, special thanks to Honda of Pasadena for hooking us up with the passport for the day. Definitely go check them out if you're in the LA area and tell them I sent you. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.